Hi everyone and welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner, or welcome if you are new to my channel. Uh, so today we're going to, of course, take a look at another horror movie from 1980 as part of my overall 1980s horror series, an ongoing series on my channel. And we're closing out the second month of this three-month series, taking a look specifically at 1980 with a, with a really great horror movie. And that is, um, it's an Italian horror movie, another one. And that movie is Lucio Fulci's City of the Living Dead, which I have here on Blu-ray, Blue Underground Edition on Blu-ray. So you get a nice, and I haven't watched any of the special features there, but you can see under the extras, there's a lot of interviews and commentaries and um, cast and crew and all kinds of things. So, but yeah, City of the Living Dead. I love that cover too, by the way, almost as much as I love the movie, which we'll get into that. But City of the Living Dead by Lucio Fulci. I think I've only seen a couple movies by Fulci so far. I know I saw a zombie, which came out in, what, 77 or something, um, a few years before this, and I really liked that one. Um, I'm not sure what else I've seen by him. I have to take a look, but let's just go ahead and get into City of the Living Dead. So, City of the Living Dead, also known as Fear in the City of the Living Dead, or also released as The Gates of Hell, which actually this is the first movie in the trilogy, The Gates of Hell trilogy. Um, two movies came out after this in 1981, um, The Beyond and uh, House by the Cemetery. Um, but anyway, this is a 1980 Italian supernatural horror film, co-written and directed by Lucio Fulci. The film follows a priest a priest whose suicide opens a gateway to hell that releases the undead. A psychic and a reporter team up to close it before All Saints Day. So it seems like a pretty simple premise there. Um, so basically in New York City, during a seance held in the apartment of Medium Teresa, Mary Woodhouse experiences a vision of a priest, Father Thomas, hanging himself in a cemetery of a village called Dunwich, or Dunwich. Mary breaks a circle and collapses to the floor when the images overwhelm her. The group presumes Mary is dead and calls the police who suspect foul play. Teresa warns the police chief of an imminent danger, an imminent evil. Journalist Peter Bell begins to investigate Mary's death and visits her grave as she is about to be buried. However, she is still alive and Peter saves her after hearing her cries. Peter and Mary visit Teresa, who says that according to the ancient book of Anak, Enoch, the events Mary witnessed in her visions presage the eruption of the living dead into our world. Perse perceive? No, visions per presage, presage the evolution, the eruption of the living dead into our world. Father Thomas's death has opened the gates of hell and the invasion will, vi the invasion will commence on the upcoming All Saints Day. In Dunwick, or Dunwich, W-I-C-H, I think that's which, Dunwich, Bob, a young vagrant, visits an abandoned house but flees after seeing a carcass. Across town, Jerry, a psychiatrist, is in consultation with Sandra, a neurotic patient. Emily Robbins, his 19-year-old girlfriend and personal assistant, later tells him that she will meet with Bob, whom she has been trying to help. That evening, Emily finds Bob at, the, at a derelict garage exhibiting unusual behavior. Father Thomas then appears as Bob runs away, smothering Emily to death with a maggot-covered hand. So yeah, that's the setup and the premise. Uh, for City of the Living Dead. As far as the cast goes, I didn't list all of them because there are a lot of characters in this movie, but the main ones are Christopher George as Peter Bell, um, Katrina McCole as Mary Woodhouse, Carla D. Majo, Medjo, Carla D. Majo as Jerry, Janet Agron as Sandra, Antonella Interlanghi as Emily Robbins, and Giovanni Lombardo Radici as Bob. If that last name sounds familiar, because I did a review for uh, House at the Edge of the Park, which uh, Giovanna Lombardo Radici was also in that. He was one of the two, um, the lesser two of the the lesser of the two evil guys uh, that held up that party in that movie. So, so anyway, yeah, that's the setup, the premise, and the cast for City Lucio Fulci's City of the Living Dead from 1980. Um, oh man, I love this movie. 
I, I love it. I, I only seen it the one time, obviously, for this review, but I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I'm going to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes bloviating as to why. So <clears throat> let's get into it, starting with the things that I liked about this movie. And I had about five different places I could start, but I'm going to start with the practical gore effects. They're top-notch, man, in this movie. Some of the best I've ever seen in a horror movie, frankly. So authentic, so gross, and incredibly gnarly at times. I just absolutely love the gore in this movie. I can't emphasize it enough. Um, there's so much of it. It's so awesome. Practical effects, man. What can you say? Um, Zombie had great uh, gore effects, too. But I actually think I like it even more in this movie. Although I need to give Zombie a rewatch, which I will at some point because I really like that movie, too. But, yeah, the first thing that stands out has to be the practical gore effects in this movie. Second to none. Um, ditto for the practical makeup effects on the living dead. Very creepy and effective. Um and not all of them are, like, it's not all blood and guts on their face. Some of them just have the makeup, like, like under their eyes where they look like, like newly created zombies, like the people that have just died recently as opposed to ones that have been rotting under the ground for a long time. So they, there's a nice variety there. And, yeah, practical effects all around in this movie are second to none. <clears throat> this movie just has so many iconic and unforgettable scenes that are both terrifying horrific and incredibly entertaining and fun you start with the the one scene the first scene that came to mind in this movie was where one of our main characters they think she's dead she ends up waking up in a trapped coffin which i think we've all sort of had that nightmare or that thought like how awful that would be trying to claw your way out of a coffin that's about to go into the ground and fortunately for her it wasn't completely buried um, at the time that she woke up. So she was able to scream and claw and eventually get the attention of another character in this movie. But that scene is unforgettable, especially the way that Fulci, he doesn't, it isn't just a case where some people walk away and then there's one that's sort of lingering back and then she screams and he quick goes and, and rescues her. It takes a while. He builds up the tension with it. He builds up the whole, is he, will he or won't he, rescue her kind of thing. Is she going to be saved or is she not going to be saved? And that's part of the genius of this movie that Fultz, really executes. It's just, it's brilliant, that whole scene, because it, it, it takes a while for him. He turns his head a couple times thinking he heard somebody scream or yell, and then he kind of blows it off and starts walking again. Then he thinks he hears it again. It's just the timing of it is perfect. So that scene stands out. Of course, you have... The whole scene where there's a couple in a car and the and the woman, it starts with the, the the bleeding eyes basically, like you get like blood drops coming down, uh blood coming from the eyes. And then this girl in one of the most iconic scenes in horror history, at least from a gore standpoint, ends up I don't know if you'd say puking up, but like spitting up her guts, her entrails. And boy is it authentic. I mean it looks it starts with what's in the throat all the way down to like the stomach is the last thing that comes out and all the intestines in between. And it just looks really gnarly, man. Um, that's an absolutely iconic scene. Um, you got another scene where there's like, a, I'll call it a maggot storm. I think they use like 200 pounds of maggots to throw at these four main characters. And then, of course, you got another uh, scene, which doesn't have as much to do with the living dead, but it does play into it towards the end of the movie where a character gets drilled in the head by a by a, a, a dad who thinks he's a murderer and trying to seduce his daughter. Um, there's a whole scene, and you actually see the drill. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Lucio Fulci's zombie, where the woman is on the other side of the door, and the the um, the shard or the, the the sharp metal object keeps coming to her eye, and you think they're going to cut away, and it actually pokes her and goes through the eye. That's kind of like that with the drill, where you see the end come out the other side of his head, and yeah, just so many iconic scenes. There's probably more, but those are the four that really stand out to me. I really can't praise the kills enough either with the scalpings in this movie. Uh, that's what a lot of the kills are with the living dead, where basically they take their hand and they grab, I don't know if you call it scalping, but they grab like their strength. They grab a, a chunk of the back of a character's head and rip it off so you can see their brains back here. And then you see it, you see it like squishing, like jello in their fingers. Oh God, I love it. Um, it's so awesome. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before, but that was just so awesome. No cutaways. None of the kills have cutaways and there's lots of visual blood and gore. Um, if you're a, if you're a gore hound, 
and you don't need a lot of story to entertain you, then you should absolutely, if you haven't watched this movie already, where have you been? This needs to be in your collection. Um, I just love that, though, the, the grabbing of the back of the head and ripping, literally ripping the back scalp off their head and exposing their brains. And, of course, you get stuff falling out. And Oh, God, I'm just about jizzing in my pants talking about it here. Uh, the movie, I think, is really well-paced, too, in the sense that there's no throwaway scenes, there's no filler, there's no like bore, long, boring dialogue scenes. I've I've recently reviewed a lot of movies for this 80s series where it seems like there's it takes a while for the movie to get going. That's not the case in this movie. This movie opens with a priest hanging himself through a vision. Um, it, it, it starts off with a bang and it really doesn't let up. There's always something going on. There's action throughout the movie, even if they're not kills, there's something going on that keeps you completely entertained and completely engaged throughout the movie. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a big pro as well. The score and the music that they use is really powerful in this movie, really awesome. It really adds so much to the overall atmosphere of this movie, which takes me to my next pro. The atmosphere in this movie is another thing that separates it. The atmosphere is just fantastic. Um, a lot of it has to do with the lighting, the camera work, the cinematography, the music that I was just talking about, and just the way Fulci directs it, just the way that Lucio Fulci focuses on it. Um, yeah, I just can't say enough about the score. It's fantastic. Um, one thing you won't hear me say a lot in my reviews, because it takes a lot to scare me, but this movie genuinely has some scary visuals and moments throughout the movie this definitely feels like a true horror movie for me, and it takes a lot to scare me. But I'm not going to say that I had to turn it off or look away, but there are scenes, there are moments visually that are that are creepy, to say the least, if not scary. So I give the film a lot of props there. And then my final pro is, if you haven't had enough, I'm sure, is just talking about the awesome directing. Again, I already touched on this with Fulci. The lighting and the shadow that he uses especially when the the woman the character is in the um in the casket under the not under the ground completely but she's trying to break out the cinematography in this movie and like i said just how he directs everything in this movie from the gore scenes to the kills to the action happening it's just fabulous 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 so okay i guess i'll move on to my few nitpick cons now um as far as cons go the story's pretty thin here. It's one of those where we kind of get, we're kind of told what, not really what's happening, but we're told what's going on, and we're just expected to kind of go with it, not ask questions. Um, there's not really any explanation as to why it's happening, or um, just kind of have to go with it. There isn't, a, um, this isn't one of those movies that, you know, if you want a good psychological thriller, psychological horror, this isn't going to be the movie for you. If you want a movie where you can just turn your brain off, and have fun and be entertained by it, then this movie is for you, and I highly recommend it. But the story's pretty thin overall. They don't they don't spend a lot of time uh, explaining that, and that's it's somewhat typical of Italian horror too. Uh, there isn't a lot of character development either, or, or, or well written characters necessarily. And with having so many characters introduced throughout the movie. Um, it would have been nice to be able to decipher them a little bit more than we do. But the main four characters stand out. Christopher George, uh, Katrina, Katri is it Katrina? K Katerina McCall, Carla, Carla DiMaggio, and Janet Agron. Those four characters, those are the actors, of course, for Peter, Peter Bell, Mary Woodhouse, Jerry, and Sandra. Those four are the ones that we really follow. And I think... They do a decent job with them, although they still don't have a whole lot behind them. But again, it's another Italian horror uh, movie thing. I don't. They focus more on the gore and the kills and the atmosphere than they do story and characters. But in this case, because there are so many, would I wouldn't have minded having a little bit more deciphering there. Um, the ending I thought felt a little too rushed. It was a little too easy for our protagonists that are left at the end to defeat the evil given all the buildup that we had to it leading up to that, like the previous 10 or 15 minutes, which were wonderful, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like um, the evil gets stabbed and disemboweled and that's it, then, then it seems to all be over. Until my other final con, which is the final shot of the movie's confusing, I don't really understand it, where there's a, there's a, there's a, a boy in the movie, like a young boy, um, 
who was the only one left from his family from the horrible events that took place. And he's with the police officer and he comes running towards the final two main characters that are left. And all of a sudden there's a, a look of terror and the screams by the one of the characters. And then it just goes dark and it's like, um, okay, that's interesting. I, I don't know exactly what's happening here. I don't know if it's just the traditional, let's leave the audience with a final scream at the end. Or if the, the kid didn't look evil to me, or I'm not sure if they thought they defeated him and maybe it's not over yet. I don't know. Um, again, it's not enough to really damper the overall movie at all. But I did have to come up with a. There's a couple of little nitpick kind of cons. But with that being said, guys, obviously, if you couldn't tell by this review, I absolutely am in love with this movie as much as you can be with a horror movie. Um, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. And the only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 are those things that I mentioned in my cons, especially the last five five or six minutes of the movie, as well as the needed a little bit, uh, just a little bit more character uh, writing there because of how many they had. But other than that, 9 out of 10 for City of the Living Dead, Lucio Fulci's 1980 Italian horror movie. Uh, go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of this movie if you've seen it. Um, you better like it as much, if not more, than I do. Otherwise, no, I'm just kidding. Um, please like this video, hit the little notification bell, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews, which I have one month of 1980 horror movies left, the month of July. And then, of course, you also don't want to miss my top 10 or 15. I haven't decided yet, but I think it is leaning towards 15 that I'll have at the very end of July, probably July 31st, the last day, before I break into other horror content on my channel the rest of the year, which you also don't want to miss. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and you're enjoying this overall uh, part of the 1980s horror series, review series. And as always, of course, stay scared. Bye.